What's going on? Mr. Football Coach here today, and today we are here to talk about adapting the 425 defense to youth football levels. Um, I've got a little bit of experience with pretty much exclusively running just the 425. And, and when I first started out as a rookie coach way back in the day, our high school program uh, that I was working at at the time was running uh, the 425. And I wanted to emulate that. So, you know, going from and starting out as a youth coach and then working my way up to the varsity level, I wanted to do the exact same thing that the high school program was running. And it's what you should always do if you're in kind of a situation where, you know, you're running the, you know, the JV program, the junior high programs, whatever, those youth programs, you should be building up to whatever the high school varsity level is doing because those coaches are, maybe that's what they want to be taught. So we were doing the 425 defense at that level. Now at the time, I didn't really call it the, the 425. I, I saw it as more of a 44 defense. Um, and a lot of people will call it a 44 just based on the alignment. But in my mind, the guys that I had at these five positions made it a 425 in my mind. Once now we get into uh, the one thing that is different about what we had to do to apply this at the youth level. And this isn't something that is always seen, but in the specific league that we played in, and we didn't always have this, but when we had to adapt this defense to what we had to play with, the league required us to use our defensive linemen in a head up position. So normally our high school 425 was a overfront. And so we would have the nose lined up in A, the tackle would be in B, and then our, our, our end is lined up in C gap and so on. And, and this guy's out here as a, as a five sack. And we couldn't do that. You couldn't have somebody pressure the center uh, right here in A gap. And normally that, and this is how I run the 425 today, and we run the over fronts how we teach it. But we had to play head up. And it causes, you know, especially at the youth level, it's easy to line the kids up. But really, you don't get to put anything A gap pressure, and you really couldn't send the house every play. It was a weird league, and you couldn't, and, and it was really out of safety and everything, and that's all great. But, you know, when you look at it from the schematic point, like, you know, what do you do here? As, as a rookie coach, I really did, I knew how to line the kids up, I knew how to get them there, but I didn't really understand the true scope of what the defense was really asking for. So whether these kids were slanting in or, or doing whatever, they were essentially two-gapping everything. And the kids didn't know that, but that's really what it was. But we weren't really gonna see, in youth football, we weren't really gonna see a whole lot of inside run game. Pretty much everything was you know, hitting the outside edge toss, just sweep, all that stuff. Like that was what was popular. And so really these interior guys, it in a way it, it matters, but in the grand scheme it really did. Now, I found that later on when you were running inside run game and you were doing it really well at the youth level, it's very deadly. Now you may have that play, you may have the fastest kid in the county right back here, and you might be able to get him in open space, but if you could shut that cat down, I mean, you're in good shape. Now, what you can do in this situation if you have to play with head up twos and fours, okay? And, and I do teach a little bit of the heads front uh, in, in, our, in our kind of our multiple system, uh, our multiple front 425 that we run, um, where we can slant these guys on Toro and Abe stunts. And that's just kind of what we do. But, you know, if you can make it easy for the kids to slant one way or the other, you can pretty much make the over front or whatever front you want from this. So if I wanted to run my over front, you know, they would start here and there's nothing saying that you can't slant to that. Uh, you may, you may want to slant this guy inside, but I like, you know, having, I like having a C gap defensive end on the back side of the, of the strength. So that was something that we were able to do. And, you know, when you just, we, you know, I, I always try to be gap sound. You know, I don't want two players in the same gap. 
All right, and so you know you can do things like pinching the guys. You can you can do pinch stunts. Okay, uh, you know it just opens up you know your linebackers here um, in that way. But in a way, the players that we had to have to make this defense successful to stop the outside run, especially in youth football, was these two players right here, the outside safeties. You may call them outside linebackers, but in my mind, they were a safety type player. These had to be, at this level, my best tacklers because they're the force defender that's going to come up. Okay, And they were also responsible in the pass game, okay, if this guy splits out, you know, he's gotta, he's gotta be on it. Now we were doing probably some more advanced stuff at the high school level. We were kind of running a match three coverage where, um, you know, we've, it's pretty much a cover three shell, but you know, we were, we were pattern reading and you know, that didn't really work at the youth level. And so we just pretty much were manned up. We were pretty much in a man free cover one situation where, you know, if this, if we had a number two, our outside linebacker, our Sam linebacker, normally in a 4-2 or in a 4-3 defense, uh, he might be the one to come over there and you kind of roll your coverage over. Um, we didn't do that. We played simple. We manned up out here. Um, that did get us hurt a few times uh, in, in a way. If I go back, I'd probably play cover three, just straight zone cover three back then. But these two players, had to make the difference. They had to make it work. Um, your free safety uh, was kind of a ball hawk type of kid. Uh, always played the deep, you know, middle third of the field uh, and just, you know, didn't let anything get him over the top. Um, and if this guy can really run the alley and be a kind of a extra linebacker for you, it's a great asset, asset uh, in that way. But, you know, once we kind of got away from you know playing that style of football on defense and got out of that league um you know things got better for us and so we were able to you know tinker around with this a little more and get into an overfront and get into different things that allowed us to play a little bit more aggressive and play the coverages we wanted to play because your coverage has to match you know your front the blitzes and the stunts that you want to run so it all has to match together and that's something I'm going to have to elaborate on uh, in a later video. But this is where my 4-2-5 defense roots started. And this is where it all kind of began. And then it just expanded from there. And through learning more, I was able to expand this further and now have a full system for the 4-2-5 defense. And it's just what I believe. And, I, and I've ran, you know, the 4-3 defense. I don't think I was running it really correctly, but I had a better understanding after I ran the 4-3 for a year, came back to 4-2-5, understand, you know, the, the, basically the concepts of the front and, and the coverages all kind of matching together, it made a lot more sense then. And so that was kind of where this all kind of comes from. So I hope this helped. This really is just a alignment issue uh, with kind of, it's just some things I've seen before. We're going to talk more youth 425 in later videos. Make sure you subscribe to this video. Subscribe to me, Mr. Football Coach. And uh, be sure to check me out on Instagram as well. And our other platforms that we're on, uh, we're releasing videos every Tuesday and Thursday. We've got some more coaching videos coming up here soon. We'll see you guys next time. Mr. Football out.